Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schiffedeke. I'm Joy J. Moore. This is the podcast for Monday, Thursday, March 28th, 2024, and the text is Mark 14, 22 through 42, uh, which includes the words of institution for uh, the Lord's Supper, Peter's denial foretold, and then the prayer in Gethsemane. So there's a whole bunch of things. My guess is that most congregations, if they're still doing a Monday Thursday service, might have traditions that they follow annually, and uh, that it might include things like uh, foot washing, although not many congregations do that. Because why, Catherine? Foot washing is... Because Peter gross. Because <laughs> <laughs> Peter, Peter gross, yeah. <laughs> Catherine preached on this at... Uh, at baccalaureate uh, last spring at Luther Seminary. And she said, why isn't this a sacrament? You have a command. It's clearly bears grace. You've got an earthy element. And she said, because foot washing is sort of weird. Yes. That's right. I remember <laughs> and that's I was, right. Sitting, weird. I was sitting in the back row thinking it's icky, <laughs> but that's the foot washing occurs in the gospel of John. So anyway, congregations that do that are going to read from John. Uh, the, if you follow the the normal liturgy, the sermons right away. I mean, it's kind of weird, uh, liturgical. But congregations will have their own um, traditions. Um, traditions. But it's it starts right off. You're in the middle. Uh, you're in the middle already of the um, with our the way we've selected readings. You're in the middle of the Last Supper, uh, and uh, it's got the words of institution. Take this as my body, and then second, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. And it's, uh, so just a reminder that the way we do the words of institution in liturgical congregations, uh, I think mainly uses Matthew's words of institution, right. especially with the word right. forgiveness, uh, mm -hmm. tying uh, the cup to forgiveness. Um and there's a, a strong note of Pauline theology for where Paul quotes them. Is it First Corinthians 11, if I remember right? But so the words here don't exactly match uh, the others, and that's fine. Uh, uh, the, the, the truth of the Bible is not to be measured uh, against. Uh, this is not a scientific paper. Uh, this is historical memory and theological proclamation. But so we have the um, words of institution uh, and then the you know, uh, you end up with the prayer in Gethsemane. And it's uh, the, the verse here in Mark leads us to um, what we will see uh, uh, um, in, the, in the crucifixion where Jesus is offered wine, fruit of the vine, mm -hmm. and doesn't take it. And of course, we always have to remember that the Last Supper is a Passover meal, uh, at yes. least in the Synoptic Gospels, right? And, and there's, there is this tradition of several cups of wine uh, Yes. through the uh, through the uh, evening through the course of the meal so the uh, the but here uh, this is my blood of the covenant uh, in other places new covenant which is poured out for many right so Jesus becomes the new Passover lamb right who yes. uh, whose blood saves from death uh, and then uh, they move forward to uh, to the Mount of Olives uh, Jesus foretells Peter's denial. Peter, of course, as always, um, is is uh, bold. Some might say uh, a little uh, too bold. Uh, even though all become deserters, I will not. Uh, and he he says again, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them say the same thing. Uh, they have good intentions, right? They're they uh, they're with their they're with their master or their their rabbi, um, their uh, their leader, and they they have all good intentions, but they can't even stay awake with him, right? So we go back again. Uh, what is it like two two or three? Well, just a, a week or so ago, where Jesus says, "Keep awake, uh, stay alert," um, and he says the same thing to them. Are you still sleeping? Uh, enough, right? Uh, Simon, uh, keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. So despite their good intentions, uh, they can't even stay awake with him in the garden. 
Can we go back, Catherine? Because something you said intrigued me. I just want to talk about it for a minute. Yeah. Um, that this is, <coughs> it's so it's so obvious. I'm sorry, it's so deep in my consciousness. I didn't even think about mentioning it. This, the Last Supper is a Passover meal. Right. And whether it's, it's some sort of Passover meal, whether it's the Synoptics or John, but in the Synoptic, it's the Passover meal, right? Right. In the Passover, the the blood of the lamb, which is uh, then spread on the lintel, the doorpost, um, that's not that's not a sacrificial uh, story in Exodus, is it? Um, from your understanding, uh, but it becomes one here. How does that work? Uh, fix fix the atonement for all of us. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, These are all my questions. So in Exodus, I think you're right. It's not exactly a sacrifice because they, uh, because the blood is spread not on the, you know, in an altar. But again, this is before the sanctuary, right? This is before the tabernacle. So it's, it comes to be understood though as a sacrifice in Jewish theology, right? That, okay. uh, That the, that the, the, uh, uh, the Passover, lamb, uh, which saves from death, is kind of the prototype of all the sacrifices at the temple, and even has echoes of the sacrifice of Isaac or the binding of Isaac, mm-hmm. right, That uh, which happens uh, on Mount Moriah, which becomes the temple mount. So it's all kind of mixed up together. But I uh, here, it's interesting, right, because Jesus, I think, uh, his blood saves from death as the Passover lamb. And yet to say, take and drink, this is my blood, is a really offensive thing to say to Jews, right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, way, again, back in Exodus, but particularly in Leviticus, you don't drink blood. Don't drink you don't, the blood. You don't drink the blood of the sacrificial animals. The blood is only to be offered on the altar. The blood belongs to God, right? For the Because the blood is the life of the of the sacrificial animal. And so you offer it back to the God who gives that animal life to begin with. So this is a, this is, this is another layer. This is a new twist that Jesus says, right? This is my blood of the covenant. So drink of it. So the other connection, thank you. I didn't know some of that. Uh, This is why doing these podcasts over the years has been great continuing education for me. I always learn from my podcast partners. Um, we have the connection to the, the, the accompanying psalm is Psalm 116. And so uh, here I can go into my psalms nerd focus. Right. Uh, this is the Passover. The, the, the psalms from 113 to 118 are the, uh, it's called the Egyptian Hallel. Uh, they are the psalms that are sung on the evening of the Passover. Uh, psalms 113 and 114 before the meal. And then so here you have in the text it says, um, when they had sung the hymn, they went out. So this is, means after the meal. And so Psalms 115 through 18 are read or sung after the meal. So that's why we picked Psalm 116, which has the language, what shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Um, uh, so there's both a little bit of Jewish Christian sort of commonality here that we're that we're calling out, but recognizing the change. And in Christian theology, it's Jesus' death that establishes the New Testament. The word covenant here could can be translated and traditionally was translated testament. So this is the blood of my testament that he is making a last will and testament. And of course, your last will and testament are not. They're not legally in effect until you die, and then he's going to die, sealing then the testament, which is the salvation he offers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, lots lots of stuff you could talk about here uh, on Monday, Thursday. I think uh, you you could certainly spend time, uh, you preachers, on the the Passover um, the Passover story. I was looking back uh, earlier. We don't have that in this year's. Narrative lectionary, but of course uh, that doesn't keep you from talking about reminding folks of that story, uh, and then to also talk about because uh, most churches I think are going to be celebrating Holy Communion uh, at this service. When I when I was a pastor and I was teaching First Communion classes, I always drew this timeline on the on the board, right? That 
we're talking, uh, you know, Passover first. So we talked about the story of Passover and the meal of Passover. And then we talked about the Last Supper. And then we talk about communion. And then we talk about the wedding banquet at the end of time, right? That Revelation mm -hmm. speaks of the, the marriage feast of the Lamb. And they're all kind of interwoven together, right? So that every time we join together at the table to partake, to eat the Lord's body and blood, uh, the, the bread and the wine, we participate in the Last Supper and, you know, all the way back in that original Passover Supper as well. And we anticipate, just, as the just, liturgy says, the foretaste of the feast to come, right? So it's just a really rich layering of uh, all of these feasts, these banquets uh, that, uh, that all proclaim the same message that God is the God who saves, uh, that God is the God who saves from death, that God is the one who pours out his blood, uh, uh, as we talked about uh, for on Palm Sunday with the, uh, the story of the alabaster jar and the woman whose story is told, uh, right? That, that all of these proclaim the saving grace uh, and the sacrificial love of the God of Israel, uh, whom we know most fully in Jesus on the cross.